Hello. I like to ask students what music is. In one word, tell me what music is. The answer I usually get is, ah, music is something I love. Well, I'm glad you do, but that's not what it is. Ah, music is emotion. Well, I hope there is emotion contained in the music, but that's not what it is. In one word, what is music? Music is sound. Sound is the raw material of music. So whatever we talk about, whichever technical details, for example, we're talking about, we must always remember that the end result, the overriding uh, aspect of our attention is listening to the sound of the music. It is the sound more than anything else that we need to focus on. That having been established, at the same time there are technical aspects to our playing that we need to focus on. And Shevchik is a wonderful way of focusing on one particular aspect of playing. In this case, in the Opus 1, the Book 1, we're going to focus on the action of the fingers and the sound that we make with the bow and with the fingers. We discussed earlier in a previous video that the finger needs to come up to the level of the knuckle of the previous finger when it's playing quarter notes, crotchets. And when it's playing eighth notes, quavers, it comes up as far as the top of the nail. And sixteenth notes, halfway up the nail. That's a rough guide. We're now going to put that in action. And I've tuned my violin ever so slightly to a narrow fifth, the sort of fifth that you'll get if you tune to a harpsichord, a well-tuned um, uh, harpsichord in historical pitch. So the fifth is slightly narrower than perfect. I then need to find for the first exercise the intonation of the B. And if I play that with a certain amount of sound, I should be able to hear what Tartini claims to have discovered, the terzo suono, the third sound, the harmonic overtone, which is actually an undertone. So we hear a, a bass note, what I call the, the phantom cellist in the room. And if I play the next note, the C, and I hear the om, very strong cello note there. Try it for yourself. I'll get the right intonation, and then I can uh, understand that between the B and the C, there's actually a, a, a wider semitone than we might be used to playing on the modern violin with modern intonation. So I'm going to take the second finger and raise it to the knuckle, the top of the knuckle of the first finger, while playing quarter notes. And then it can just fall pretty much with its own weight. It doesn't need any extra pressure. But it does have to fall down with enough speed so that we don't hear that intermediary sound, which is slightly out of tune and slightly hazy. It must come down with a clear sound, a little bit like a light bulb um, being switched on. And it also needs to rise with that same clarity of sound. So we listen very clearly to those to the rising and falling of the sound, that it's pure and clear. And the same thing for the first finger. It rises to where the knuckle of the previous finger would be if we had another finger. So, the first exercise in book one is... Now, 
I never want to hear a student play in a mechanical way like that, but always in a singing, phrased way with a beautiful sound. And I'm going to make sure that I'm, uh, I've experimented with the point of contact with the bow so that... I found it. And I play that a few times. Four notes in a bow, making sure I'm using all the bow and listening to the sound every nanosecond of the time. Then I'm going to go on to eight notes, and there are now eight notes in a bow, and I make sure I am dividing the bow perfectly, so I use the whole bow for that. And at this point, the finger is only rising to the top of the nail. Then I go on to 16th notes, and now the fingers are only rising to halfway up the nail. Or I could break into 30 second notes as well. And that's the, f the first exercise completed. We don't need to go back on it because there are enough exercises in Shevchik's um, books that we don't have to repeat exercises. The next exercise I'm going to practice in exactly the same way. Make sure I know where the D is. And make sure that when I use the, when I play with the third finger, it's really independent of the second finger, so it's not stuck together with the sec second finger. Um, it, there's, there's room between the fingers for uh, uh, to put a, a pencil through, and that when I'm using the third finger, the fourth finger does what it wants. It's not switched on, it's just reacting in some way that it knows how to do. Uh, so I don't want to keep it stiff like that. So the second exercise, when I'm going to play with a boot with a beautiful singing sound. And exactly the right number of notes. Um, and the next exercise, well, with the fourth finger, I might need to give it just a little extra, a little extra effort. So it really, it really rings that E. Because if I, it, being a weaker finger, it might n need a little extra help, so that it doesn't sound dull like that. Again, a sing, singing sound. So that's the first three exercises done. And then I can go on to the next one. And always checking the intonation, always listening to the way the finger comes down with that little magnetic attraction so that the it's clean and there's no um, hushing noise in between the sounds. And always lifting up with enough springiness so that the there is no um, hushiness when the finger rises. Remember to, to, to raise the finger more for the quarter notes, less for the eighth notes, and barely at all for the sixteenth or thirty-second notes. And to regard each little snippet as if it's a, a, a snippet of a, um, of a Mozart sonata or a Vivaldi concerto, uh, and not something that is wooden and something that you can't use. There's no point practicing a sound that you won't want to use. I personally really enjoyed, when I was a student, practicing Shevchik and, and exercises like it, because I could feel its, it, its value, and then I could apply what I learned to, to scales and to, 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 to the repertoire. 
So I urge you to play Shevchik as musically as you possibly can and to make a most beautiful sound and to really enjoy making those sounds and listening to the beauty of the sound and the quality of the finger action. Enjoy. <laughs>